Hi, I'm Lisa. This is another video to take your English to the final level of fluency. You're going to listen to a conversation that I have with a native speaker in Los Angeles. I will teach you a lot of different expressions that the native speaker is using, and we will talk about some pronunciation rules. This is part two of my conversation with a psychologist who works in Los Angeles. Her name is Joanne Weidman. She's a licensed marriage and family therapist. Joanne helps people who struggle with anxiety, depression, and all sorts of other psychological problems. She specializes in working with people in the entertainment industry, people in Hollywood. In this part of my conversation with Joanne, she talks about the specific struggles, emotional and psychological struggles, that people in Hollywood deal with. I think you'll find this conversation interesting. And of course, you're going to learn a lot of different expressions that native speakers use. I will give you other example sentences so that you can try using them in different contexts. For example, do you know the expression low key? A non-native speaker might say, he's a quiet, calm person who doesn't get excited easily. But there is a shorter way to say this. A native speaker might say, he's very low key. Joanne used the expression low key. A non-native speaker might say, he's an actor, but he's not working right now. And a native speaker might say, he's an out of work actor. A non-native speaker might say, I haven't had a job for two years. And a native speaker might say, I've been out of work for two years. I also want to let you know that there's also part three of my conversation with Joanne coming soon. Part three will be really interesting also. She will give you advice on how to deal with your own personal struggles. When life gets difficult, what are some tools that we can use so that we can feel stronger to deal with the challenges of life? So make sure you subscribe so that you can get notified when that video comes. Now let's watch my conversation with Joanne where she talks about her work as a psychologist, specifically working with people in the entertainment industry. And then I will come back and I will teach you the expressions that she used and some pronunciation rules. So you work with a lot of actors? I work with actors and writers and artists and people who are aligned in a multitude of ways with the entertainment industry because it's a very complex industry. Those are people I really enjoy working with. Um, I, one of my areas of expertise is working with anxiety. And people who are artists or creatives or work in entertainment tend to be um, vulnerable to anxiety. People who are artistic and creative are often what we call highly sensitive which means they pick up all kinds of nuances in everything. They pick up if the person next to them is upset with them or hurt. They feel threat in areas, in ways that are very, um, very nuanced, very low key. And anxiety can be high because of the very nature of their sensitive personality. Instead of saying in many ways, you can say in a multitude of ways. Let's listen to the way Joanne used that expression. I work with actors and writers and artists and people who are aligned in a multitude of ways with the entertainment industry. Joanne said that she works with people who are aligned with the entertainment industry in a multitude of ways. Instead of saying, that experience impacted me in many ways, you can say, that experience impacted me in a multitude of ways. Why don't you pause this video now and create your own sentence with in a multitude of ways. Say something about your own life. Did you do it? I strongly recommend that you create your own sentences every time you learn a new word, a new expression, or even a new grammar rule. Your knowledge needs to change from passive knowledge to active knowledge. It's not enough just to know the meaning. It's not enough just to understand native speakers, but that you are also able to use those words and expressions, both when you're speaking and when you're writing. Okay, let's go on to the next expression. This word can be pronounced as complex or complex. If the first syllable is stressed, 
complex, that is a noun. When the second syllable is stressed, when we say complex, that's an adjective. And these words have different meanings. Let's listen to the way Joanne used complex. Because it's a very complex industry. Joanne said, it's a very complex industry. If something is complex, it's difficult to understand. It's complicated. It has a lot of different parts. You can say, this situation is complex. But don't confuse this with complex. That's a noun. A complex is a group of buildings near each other. You can say, he lives in that apartment complex. In that case, we stress the first syllable. Let's repeat both of those words. Complex, complex. The phrasal verb to pick up has a lot of different meanings, and you probably know several of those meanings, but you might not know it the way Joanne used it. Let's listen. Which means they pick up all kinds of nuances in everything. They pick up if the person next to them is upset with them or hurt. Joanne said they pick up all kinds of nuances. And she also said they pick up if the person next to them is upset or hurt. Can you guess the meaning of pick up from the context? In this case, to pick up means to notice something that is difficult to notice that maybe other people don't notice. You can say, nobody noticed that he was angry, but I was able to pick it up. I'm surprised nobody else picked it up. Dogs have a very strong sense of smell. They can pick up scents that humans can't. Let's listen to the way Joanne used low key. They feel threat in areas, in ways that are very, um, very nuanced, very low key. Joanne said that creative people can feel threats in different areas in ways that are very nuanced and low key. If something is low key, it's subtle. It's not easily noticeable. But a person can also be low key. Someone who is relaxed, someone who is not intense. You can say, it's not a big party. It's just a low key gathering. He's kind of a quiet, low-key guy. Let's listen to the way Joanne used very. She didn't say the nature of something. She said the very nature of. Why did she use it like that? Let's listen and then I'll explain. And anxiety can be high because of the very nature of their sensitive personality. Joanne said that anxiety can be high because of the very nature of their sensitive personality. When we use very this way, we use it to emphasize that we are talking about one particular thing, exactly about one specific thing or one person. For example, you can say, Beethoven lived in this very house. For example, a non-native speaker might say, that's exactly what she said. But a native speaker might say, those were her very words. A common thing to say is this very minute. I need to talk to you this very minute. Instead of saying, I need to talk to you right now, you can say, I need to talk to you this very minute. You can say, I can't believe that you bought the very same dress that I did. It's exactly the same. It's the very same one. Some of these people are highly talented and I wonder if they doubt themselves when they're out of work. I think that every, I don't know anyone in Hollywood who doesn't doubt themselves, even when they're working. Really? Yeah, really? even when they are working. Tell um, me about that. That's so interesting to me. I would think that if they're working, if they're feeling like I'm in that 1%, I got the role and a hundred other people didn't. You know, that is a great point. And I think they think that for a minute, the day they get the job. But once you're actually in the work, if you're a writer, there are people, you might be getting paid to write on a TV show, but you're constantly being critiqued for your work. It's not good enough. It pump it up, it has to be funnier, it has to be better, you have to hit this deadline. Um, so there's still constantly critique coming in. So you don't ever really feel like you hit a spot. Similarly with people who are actors, unfortunately, and understandably at the same time, acting is very dependent on a person's appearance. So makeup, hair, costumes, um, clothing, wardrobe, constantly in fittings, constantly in situations where you're being scrutinized to a very high degree. Let's listen to the way I used out of work. Some of these people are highly talented and I wonder if they doubt themselves when they're out of work. 
I said, I wonder if they doubt themselves when they're out of work. And out of work is simply another way to say unemployed. He was out of work for two years. Do you sometimes confuse these two words? To critique versus to criticize. Let's listen to the way Joanne used critique. There are people, you might be getting paid to write on a TV show, but you're constantly being critiqued for your work. Joanne said, you're constantly being critiqued for your work. Let's pronounce it correctly first. Critique. Critique. We're going to stress the second syllable. Critique. To critique is to give a detailed explanation, an evaluation, to give an opinion. However, to criticize means to say negative things. Be careful, those two meanings are different. For example, if we say, he critiqued my performance, that's different from, he criticized my performance. If he critiqued my performance, he gave me his opinion. And maybe my performance was good, maybe it was bad in his opinion. It's not necessarily bad. But if you say, he criticized my performance, that means he found the things that were wrong and he said negative things about my performance. We can say, the students gave speeches which were critiqued by their classmates. The politician was criticized for his bad decisions. So you can say to someone, could you please critique my speech? Tell me what you think of it. I'm sure you know the meaning of the word deadline, when something is due, when you have to finish something by a certain time. That's a deadline. And Joanne said to hit a deadline. You can also say to meet a deadline. Let's listen. It's not good enough. It pump it up. It has to be funnier. It has to be better. You have to hit this deadline. It has to be better. You have to hit this deadline. You can say, we were criticized because we didn't hit the deadline. We didn't do it by the time we were supposed to do it. The deadline is this Friday. I hope we can meet the deadline. So you can say to meet the deadline or to hit the deadline. And the next expression that Joanne used also had the word hit in it. She said to hit the spot. So you don't ever really feel like you hit a spot. She said, so you never really feel like you hit the spot. If something hits the spot, it's exactly what is required. It's exactly what is needed. So if you feel like you don't hit the spot, it means you're not doing exactly what people expect you to do. Very commonly, the expression to hit the spot is used for food or for drink. When you have something that's exactly what your body needs, you can say something like this. That cold drink really hit the spot. I was so thirsty and hot, I needed that cold drink and it hit the spot. It was perfect. Or, I'm so hungry, a big steak would hit the spot now. Let's listen to the way some other people use to hit the spot. Stuff and more stuff do not really satisfy. They do not hit the spot. And it like totally hit the spot for me when I heard it. They decided to do a remake a few years back which just really doesn't hit the spot for me. Do you know the verb to scrutinize? Let's listen to Joanne. Constantly in fittings, constantly in situations where you're being scrutinized to a very high degree. Joanne said, when you're a famous person, you are constantly in situations where you are being scrutinized to a high degree. To scrutinize means to examine something or someone very carefully, to inspect carefully and thoroughly. The lawyer scrutinized every detail of the contract. Detectives scrutinize the neighborhood looking for evidence. The actor's every move is being scrutinized by the media. Instead of saying a lot, you can say to a very high degree. Let's listen. Constantly in fittings, constantly in situations where you're being scrutinized to a very high degree. Joanne said, you're being scrutinized to a very high degree. And that means a lot, intensely, to a large extent. You can say, it's done to a very high degree of detail, or to a very high degree of accuracy, to a very high degree of precision, or a very high degree of certainty. So instead of saying they are very sure, you can say they have a very high degree of certainty. 
people will travel with makeup artists and hair stylists for a reason because and I think in the in the 20 years since I have been a therapist one of the things that has really amped up is um, social media and everything gets amplified a thousand different times uh, so when so every single appearance that you do whether it you go out to a restaurant privately somebody could take a picture and post it on social media and that needs to be positive which means you almost always have to look good and be ready to hit the mark you have to well, be on you have to be on all the time i think time was pre-social media an actor could actually go to a restaurant and you know a couple people might say hi to them but it wasn't going to be all over social media what they wore what they ate and that really increases the stressors of someone so even someone who is successful is still every day feeling like they are being evaluated by people on the outside and found lacking and people can be incredibly brutal on social media about the smallest thing. Did you see the way she wore her hair? I can't believe she wore that top. That's pretty brutal. And, and even successful people find it difficult to take that time and again. That's true, that's true. And can you imagine uh, even before 20, 30 years ago, there were, people didn't have phones and, mm -hmm. and you could just relax and mm -hmm. you can be anonymous and mm -hmm. not worry about somebody might be hiding, hiding behind the bushes or. Right. right, and even an interview, you could do an interview for a television show, for example, and it might not go well, but no one will ever see it again. Now it lives forever online. I had never actually thought about yeah. that. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. It's a huge stressor. You have to watch every word you say. They have to watch every word they say. And then they can cancel you, which is a brand new thing altogether. <laughs> that is so new that yes, the fear of being canceled, literally, you did one thing or even thanks to social media, you said something in your social media 10 years ago That's that right. someone discovers and you're canceled. So the anxiety that goes with that, any kind of career that has a public profile, is, can be pretty overwhelming. And how can people get in touch with you? People can uh, find me at my website, joannewidebentherapy.com, and uh, you can, the best way to reach me is through email, um, or you can certainly call me at the number on the website, and I look forward to hearing from anyone. If I'm not the right therapist for you, I can help you find the right therapist. So please feel free to contact me, even if you're just looking. We have another expression with hit, to hit the mark. Let's listen to Joanne. And that needs to be positive, which means you almost always have to look good and be ready to hit the mark. Joanne said, when you're famous, you almost always have to look good and be ready to hit the mark. To hit the mark means to succeed, to succeed in pleasing people, to give people what they want and what they expect, to be very good, to have good results. Let's listen to how some other people used it. But by working together, we believe we can hit the mark. Their feedback might give you some indication of whether you've hit the mark or maybe you're off. The word on has so many different meanings. Let's listen to the way Joanne and I used to be on. You have to be on. You have to be on all the time. I said, you need to be on. And Joanne replied, you need to be on all the time. What does that mean? To be on means to be in performance mode, to be in good form, to always be ready to perform, to be engaged in action. Of course, you know the meaning of on if I say, my TV is on, the lights are on. But what does it mean when a person is on? It means they are performing. And if you're always on, you're always under pressure to perform. You can say, his behavior is not very natural, he's always on. Or you can say, my job requires me to be on all the time. So famous people, even when they're not working, they feel the pressure to be on. Let's listen to the expression, difficult to take. Did you see the way she wore her hair? I can't believe she wore that top. That's pretty brutal. And, and even successful people find it difficult to take that time and again. When people are brutal, even successful people find it difficult to take. If something is difficult to take, it's difficult to tolerate. A very common expression is, I can't take it anymore. Let's say that together with a lot of emotion. When you just can't deal with it anymore, it's too much for you. Repeat after me, I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. I've had enough, I can't take it anymore. Joanne said time and again. And, and even successful people find it difficult to take that time and again. She said, 
people find it difficult to take time and again, over and over again, many times over a long period of time, repeatedly. You can say, I've asked you to do that time and again, and you still haven't done it. Let's listen to the way some other people use time and again. But what I found time and again in my work is that the exact opposite happens. Congress time and again has had multiple opportunities to take action. Even though we see time and again that it's the poorest of people who are the most vulnerable to extreme weather. Let's listen to the expression to watch every word you say. You have to watch every word you say. They have to watch every word they say. And to watch every word you say is to be careful about every word you say. You are afraid to say something wrong. You're afraid to make a mistake when you're speaking. You have to watch every word you say. She's so sensitive. When I am with her, I have to watch every word I say. I have to be careful how I speak. Do you know the difference between all together and all together? They are very different. And they can cancel you, which is a brand new thing altogether. And then they cancel you, which is a brand new thing altogether. When you use the two words all together, it means everyone together or everything together in one group. But what is all together when it's one word? And if you notice, there's only one L. That means completely, all things considered on the whole. A very common thing to say is, I don't altogether agree with you. He's not altogether happy about it. This is an altogether different situation. I'm not altogether sure what happened. And don't forget to watch part three where Joanne gives us some advice about how to be strong and resilient when difficult things come in our lives. I really enjoyed hearing about it and I think you will too. But meanwhile, practice the expressions you just learned. Watch the video again and after each expression, pause and make your own sentences or write the sentences giving examples related to your own life. It's the best way to practice. You have to internalize those words that you're learning. Okay, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To get the two courses, the American Accent Course and the 400 Advanced Words You Must Know for Fluent English, go to accurateenglish.com.